Okay, this is a video on arc length. Basically what you have is a piece of pie and you want to know how long the length is of that piece of pie S in relationship to the actual circle. And the relationship is pretty simple actually. It's, it is S equals r theta and that gets very helpful in that you can use this relationship to determine the length of a full pi for example we're all familiar with the formula that s equals 2 pi r well the way they come up with that formula is that one side of the circle is pi radians pi radians is 180 degrees and the other side of the circle is 360 degrees or 2 pi so C as most of us learn it is 2 pi r so the whole length of the circle is 2 pi r that's valuable and when you're trying to determine the uh, from a go-karting standpoint how fast a go-kart is going uh, VT would represent how fast a go-kart is going and what you would have in this particular formula is that you know how how fast the tire is actually spinning it's spinning at let's say 360 revolutions per minute okay well how would you determine how fast this the edge of the wheel is turning per time well it's related to this particular formula and that formula is derived by this ds dt which represents how far the arc length is moving per time equals r times d theta dt or in a simplified form vt which is v tangential equals r times the revolutions per minute so to figure out how fast this uh, go-kart wheels going for example you have a six inch radius it would be VT equals R which is six inches times 360 revolutions per minute and you would come up with uh, whatever that number is I don't have that off the top of my head but it'd be around 1800 um, 1800 inches per minute and whatever that is you have to do some breakdown of that to come up with miles per hour and that's most of your formula is this ugly mess in here to use to break down this inches per minute into something that's useful okay last time we learned about the relationship between the arc length of a, a circle the radius and the angle and that relationship is s equals r theta okay that's all fine and dandy but what we're going to do now is we are going to go and and look at a mechanism for example this morning i was looking at a steering mechanism where i could uh, simplify it and have a different kind of uh, radius system and basically what it comes down to is this linkage needs to move back and forth this way it gets fixed right here and then this part needs to move okay it moves in this direction as well it moves opposite well that's all fine and dandy however I wanted to do a reduction and I needed to have a smaller radius right here and then this one would move you know a theta and what would be connected to that would actually be the edge of the steering wheel like this okay so we call that s steering and this would be r steering and here's one thing when you're dealing with a mechanism you kind of march around the mechanism so this would become r1 this would become r2 this would become r3 Okay, and in correspondence, this would become S3, the distance that's traveled, and then this would become S2, and then this one would become S1. Okay, and this is theta1, and then this one I actually have a theta. This would be theta2. It would be this whole mechanism would be related to each other by all these this nasty mess here. Okay, well, 
the relationship that we're going to grab is that S1 equals S2. Okay, so that's a relationship between these two. And the whole purpose of this mechanism, just in case you didn't see it, is that this one, this small mechanism right here, will move a small amount, while this will move a, be levered, it will, it will move a little bit. We don't want this steering wheel moving a whole lot, and the problem is that there's a lot of force required in this edge right here, so we need to have a mechanism that will transfer that load and actually get it to do what we want. Okay. So how do we get that relationship to make sense? Well, our next video will show you that. Okay, last time we were uh, talking about this mega mechanism here. Now we're going to attack this mechanism. And basically what you do is you start attacking pieces. So we're going to attack this piece, which is uh, the relationship, and we go with S steering equals R steering times theta. Okay. Then we attack the next piece of the mechanism, which is this piece, and that is S1 uh, equals R1, and it's very hard to see what I did here because of the, its uh, ugliness, but basically these two are related by this relationship. Now the next part of this is we're going to grab this part of the mechanism and this part of the mechanism. So this part right here is S2 equals R2 times theta2 and theta2 is right here right there and then below we're going to have S3 equals R3 and because they're they're bound by a mechanism bound together by a mechanism wow okay I screwed that up there um, hopefully I can fix that uh, I don't like doing this in the middle of videos, but delete that boom, and redraw it. Uh, basically what that is, again, we're looking at this mechanism here, which is R3 times theta2. They're the same angle because this moves here, this other edge moves the same amount theta2 this way. Now, I've really screwed up the screen, but the bottom line is that we have this, these formulas and they're bound to each other by these parts. Theta right here is binding them together and theta here is binding this together and these two are going to be bound together. I don't want to make this a huge mess but S1 right here is the same as S2 and that will be our next binding in the uh, equation setup. So if you can bear with me we'll go to the next screen. Basically I said that S2 will start simplest We'll start at the very heart of it instead of going to the periphery where all the ugly mess is and we'll start first with S1 equals S2. That's our basic thing. S1 equals S2 and we can just change that to be S so that it looks cleaner in our formulas. So knowing that we'll take this formula right here which is this pen's not cooperating here R1 times theta 1 will equal S2, which is what? It is R2 times theta 2. And that's the basic relationship between them. Okay? So if you want to know what uh, you can do a, a, a ratio between those two if you wanted to. But that's a basic relationship. So now we can go down the periphery of each one and we know that S, what did we say here? We said that S uh, steering times R steering equals this. So we say uh, S steering S steering equals R steering times theta 1. Okay, that's fine. And then we say S3, uh, three, which is down below here, S3 equals R3 times theta 2. Okay. Now this may get a little confusing here because what we're trying to do is I actually don't really care about all these thetas so much. What I do care about is this S3, S2, that's steering, that's what that says, and S3. And what I want is a final formula that says S steering equals S3 times this big ugly mess. And the big question that we have here 
is what is this ugly mess and that will be the next set of formulas that we'll derive and it really comes down to the following relationship uh, it's, it's a ratio between S S steering is what you'll end up doing you'll have S steering over S3 and that will equal um, R3 times R2 divided by R1 times R3. Actually, that, that top one is R steering. That's what that's supposed to be. So uh, I can go into derivation, and I will in the next screen. But that way, this is how the formula flowed. Basically, you started with S1 equals S2 equals S, knowing that. Then you have R1 theta 1 equals R2 theta 2. And the other mechanisms which were on the periphery was S steering times R steering times theta 1. And then the other periphery one, which is S3 equals R3 times theta 2. Okay? So what you're doing here next is you're isolating a theta. And the reason for that, this theta right here, is that you want to take this theta right here and you want to stuff it into this formula. And that's what happened here. If you take a look, S over S, RS has been stuffed into this formula up here. And the same with this one. S3, you isolated it. So now it's just a matter of how do we isolate the S's. And so we can just pull the S's out. We have S steering times R1 divided by R3 equals R2 times uh, over R3 times S3. Okay, so then to isolate these, you can take this and grab it and stuff it underneath, and you end up with that S steering equals R3, I mean S3 times the ugly mass of all that ratio reduced, which is R2 divided by R3 uh, Did I screw up the steerings again? Okay, this one here is uh, steering. Why I keep making it a 3? Because it must be dyslexic. So that would be R steering times uh, over R1 here. And that's the formula. And the purpose of that is then you can throw it into a uh, spreadsheet and figure out how many inches of movement on your steering wheel you'll have and then relate it down to your mechanism way down below to see how much it's going to move as well. And then you can troubleshoot that using your spreadsheet and finally come up with a mechanism length that's going to work. Another set of formulas equals torque and you can do all that at the same time to figure out how much force is going to be required to move it on the edge and that's very similar in derivation. We can go into that later but right now I just wanted to show you the arc length principle that's used a lot in gearboxes and we can do that in another set of videos.